Hi, everybody. Once again, thank you for being with us. And uh, welcome to our session, how to build modern applications and innovate faster with uh, DevOps. Um, my name is Gustavo Rios. I am a solutions architect with ClearScale, and I'll be your presenter today. I want to mention that we have a, a Q&A tab in the application. Please submit your questions, and we'll answer at the end of the session. Now let's start with um, a couple of words about uh, ClearScale. Uh, ClearScale is an uh, AWS premier consulting partner. We started in Silicon Valley in 2011 and have completed over 850 projects for more than uh, 250 Amazon customers. Uh, we have 10 AWS partner competencies such as uh, data and analytics, migrations, DevOps, and uh, SaaS. Our engineering team holds over 100 AWS certifications. Uh, today's agenda will actually include uh, these items in the screen. We're going to uh, talk about um, infrastructure as code, what is it and how we use them. We're going to talk about CI CD concepts uh, widely used in the um, DevOps community. We're going to explore AWS services that work with uh, CI CD pipelines uh, and infrastructure as code. How to deploy uh, microservices applications using CI CD pipelines, how to monitor applications and infrastructure uh, performance. And uh, we're going to uh, close with a QA session. So, uh, how to manage. Um, IT infrastructure as code. Uh, infrastructure as code is the process of uh, managing and provisioning computer stacks through machine readable definition files, rather than physical hardware configurations or interactive configuration tools. I would refer to infrastructure as code as uh, AIC for short. AIC has emerged as a best practice for automating the provisioning of uh, infrastructure services. Uh, treat the deployment of servers, networking, storage as a regular development code. We will talk a little bit about uh, the benefits of uh, AIC and how to leverage the capabilities of AWS in this space to support DevOps initiatives. Speaking about DevOps, we need to understand that DevOps is a combination of uh, cultural philosophies, practices, and tools that increases your uh, business ability to deliver applications and services uh, at a high velocity. AIC is part of uh, infrastructure management, which generally speaking is a process associated with software engineering. Traditionally, we use uh, to rack and stack hardware, and then we use to install and configure operating systems and applications to support business technology needs. Cloud computing takes advantage of uh, virtualization to enable the on-demand provision provisioning of compute, network, and storage resources. Uh, IT managers have often performed infrastructure provisioning manually. The manual processes have certain disadvantages, including higher costs because they require human capital that could be otherwise go toward uh, more important business needs, inconsistency due to human error, leading to deviations from configuration standards, Lack of agility by limiting the speed at which uh, your organization can release new versions of services in response to customer needs and market drivers. Difficulty in uh, attaining and maintaining compliance, uh, this is due to the absence of repeatable processes. AIC addresses these deficiencies by bringing automation to the provisioning process. So when, when we deploy infrastructure, um, you know, they follow a, uh, a life cycle. Um, this figure illustrates uh, a common view of the life cycle of infrastructure resources in an organization. There are, there are actually five stages. One, resource provisioning. Here, administrators provision the resources according to the specifications they want. Two, configuration management the resources become components of a configuration management system that supports activity, activities such as uh, tuning and patching. Three, monitoring and performance. 
Monitoring and performance tools validate the operational status of the resources by examining items such as metrics, synthetic transactions, and log files. Four, compliance and governance. Compliance and governance frameworks drive additional validation to ensure alignment with corporate and industry standards, as well as regulatory requirements. Resource organization, uh, number five, administrators uh, review performance data and uh, identify changes needed to optimize the environment around criteria such as performance and cost management. Uh, on these five stages, uh, infrastructure as code is actually in, uh, in the first stage, is, uh, is during the resource uh, provisioning. And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's the only one that we're going to touch uh, on these five, because uh, it's one of the most important ones. So in, in AWS, uh, the service that is in charge of uh, dealing with um, infrastructure as code is, uh, is called cloud formation. And by now we understand that uh, AIC is about deploying infrastructure in an automated and repeatable way. Um, and like I said, AWS cloud formation is a tool to implement AIC. Uh, let's talk a bit about some of the uh, features on uh, AWS cloud formation. Uh, cloud formation is actually extensive, uh, uh, it's extensible. Uh, it has a uh, AWS cloud, cloud formation registry and with them, you can model and provision third-party application resources alongside AWS resources. Examples of third-party resources are monitoring, team productivity, incident management, and uh, version control tools. Uh, in order to, um, uh, uh, to, um, act, to, act, to act with uh, uh, CloudFormation, uh, you you can write JSON in YAML files. Well, 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 we will see a little bit of that in the next slide. Um, you can also author a, 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 um, authoring with familiar programming languages. Uh, with the uh, AWS Cloud Development Kit, you can define your cloud environment using TypeScript, Python, Java, and .NET. Uh, by using those uh, languages with the CDK, uh, this uh, this kit will actually convert from these languages into a YAML file uh, or um, JSON file, and uh, and then it will pass to CloudFormation. You can also use CloudFormation to build serverless applications with SAM. Uh, build serverless applications faster with the AWS serverless application model. Is, which is an open source framework that provides shorthand syntax to express functions, API databases, and uh, even you know source mapping. And then uh, last one, uh, preview changes uh, to your environment. CloudFormation change sets allow you to preview how, um, how proposed changes to a stack might affect your running resources. For example, to check uh, whether your changes will be deleted or replaced by uh, any critical resource. Uh, so those are pretty much, uh, you know, the main features of CloudFormation. And uh, <clears throat> this is how it looks like in, uh, uh, in code, right? This is just a plain text file, which follows a JSON or, or YAML. And, um, and with this, you can, you, you're telling the system that you want an S3 bucket named hello bucket, right? And once you uh, give this to CloudFormation, then it'll deploy for you uh, exactly what you asked for. This is true also for virtual machines, for databases uh, and everything, you know, all the services that AWS actually provide. So, uh, Let's go and uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, CI/CD workflows now. Um, CI/CD pipelines automate your software delivery process. Uh, the pipeline builds code, runs tests, uh, and safely deploys a new version of the application. Uh, continuous integration is a software development practice where developers regularly merge their code changes into a central repository, after which automated builds and tests are run. Continuous, continuous delivery is a software uh, development practice where code changes are automatically built, tested, and prepared for production release. 
With continuous deployment, revisions are deployed to a production environment automatically without explicit approval from a developer, making the entire software release process automated. Now, we need to keep in mind that continuous delivery is not continuous deployment. One uh, misconception about continuous delivery is that it means every change committed is applied to production immediately after passing automated tests. However, the point of continuous delivery is not to apply every change to production immediately, but to ensure that every change is ready to go to production. Before deploying a change to production, you can implement a decision process to ensure that the production de deployment is authorized and audited. This decision can be made by a person and then executed by the tooling. Using continuous delivery, the decision to go live becomes a business decision, not a technical one. The technical validation happens on every commit. Rolling out a change to production is not a disruptive event anymore. So um, let's talk a little bit about the benefits of uh, continuous delivery. Uh, CD provides numerous benefits for your software development team, including automating the process, improving developer productivity, improving code quality, and delivering updates to your customer faster. Let's talk a, a bit more about them. Uh, automate the software release process. CD provides a method for your team to check in code that is automatically built, tested, and prepared to release for production so that your software delivery is efficient, resilient, rapid, and secure. Uh, improve developer productivity. CD practices help your team productivity by freeing developers from manual tasks, untangling complex dependencies, and returning focus to delivering uh, new features in software. Instead, instead of uh, integrating their code with, the, uh, with other parts of the business, and spending cycles on how to deploy this code to a platform, developers can focus on coding logic that delivers uh, the features uh, you need. Um, then we have improved code quality, where CD can help you discover and address bugs early in the delivery process before they grow into larger problems later. Your team can easily perform additional types of code tests because the entire um, process has been automated. With the discipline of more testing more frequently, teams can iterate faster with immediate feedback on the impact of changes. This enables teams to drive uh, quality code with a uh, high assurance of stability and security. Developers will know through immediate feedback whether the uh, new code works and whether any breaking changes or bugs were introduced. Uh, mistakes caught early on uh, in the development process are the easiest to fix. Finally, deliver updates faster. CD helps your team deliver updates to customers quickly and frequently. When CD is implemented, the velocity of the entire team, including the uh, release of uh, feature and bug fixes, is increased. Enterprise can respond faster to uh, market changes, security challenges, customer needs, and cost pressures. For example, you know, if I uh, new security feature is required. Your team can implement CICD with automated testing to introduce the uh, fix quickly and reliable to production system with high confidence. Uh, you, you know, with, with, um, with, these, uh, with these items, you know, what it used to take weeks and months can now be done in days or even hours because pretty much everything is automated. What about testing? Testing is uh, very important in CI/CD pipelines because um, since um, we are, you know, we don't have uh, developers in the middle, we try to automate everything. Uh, adding more tests, uh, especially at the lower level, um, is uh, will help us a lot. Um, so here we have. Um, you know, what we call it the testing pyramid is a concept provided by Mike Conn in Succeeding with Agile. It shows the various software tests in relation to their cost and speed at which they run. Unit tests are on the bottom of the pyramid. They are both the fastest to run and the least expensive. Therefore, unit tests should make up uh, the uh, bulk of your testing strategy. A good rule of thumb is, is uh, you know, is about 70%. 
Unit tests should have near complete code coverage because bugs caught in this phase can be fixed quickly and cheaply. Service component as uh, service component integration tests are above unit tests on the pyramid. These tests require detailed environments and therefore are more costly in infrastructure requirements and slower to run. Performance and compliance tests are the next level. They require production quality environments and are more expensive yet. UI and user acceptance tests are at the top of the pyramid and require production quality environments as well. All of these tests are part of the uh, complete strategy to assure high quality software. However, for speed of development, emphasis is on the number of tests and the coverage at, in the bottom half of the pyramid. Um, all right, let's go over the uh, CICD stages. Um, we have, on CICD, we have four main stages, usually. Uh, we have the source, where we keep our code. We have the, um, the stage that we execute the build to uh, build the application. Uh, and then we have a staging and a production stage, right? Um, setting up the source at the beginning of the project is essential to set up a source where you can store your raw code and configuration and schema changes. In the uh, source stage, uh, choose a source code repository such as uh, one hosted by GitHub, which is very common, or AWS code commit, uh, which we're going to see later is a similar, uh, offers, uh, offers similar functionalities as a, as a GitHub. Setting up and executing builds. Build automation is essential to the CI process. When setting up a build automation, you need to choose the right build tool. It's also a best practice to version the final builds artifacts, which makes it easier to deploy and to keep track of issues. In the build stage, the build uh, the build tools uh, will take uh, as input any change to the source code repository, build the software, and run the um, and run the following types of tests. Uh, it should run a unit testing, uh, test a specific section of the code to ensure the code does what it's expected to do. A static code analysis. This analysis can help to find coding errors and security holes, and it also can ensure conformance uh, to coding guidelines. Uh, staging, in the staging phase, uh, full environments are created that mirror the eventual production environment. The following tests are performed. Integration testing verifies the interfaces between components against software design. Component testing tests messages, uh, pe message passing between various components and their outcomes. System testing tests the system end-to-end -end and verifies if the software satisfies the business requirement. Uh, performance testing the, the, the determines the uh, responsiveness and stability of a system as it performs under a particular workload. Types of performance tests may might include uh, load tests, stress tests, and spike tests. Performance tests are used for benchmarking against predefined criteria. Um, compliance testing. Uh, it determines if you are implementing and meeting the defined standards. User acceptance testing validates the end-to-end -end, uh, business flow. This testing is executed by an end user in a uh, staging environment. Production. Finally, after passing the previous test, the staging phase is repeated in a production environment. In this phase, a final canary test can be completed by deploying the new code only on a small subset of servers, or even one server, or one region, before deploying code to the entire uh, production environment. So um, another thing as a, as a part of the CI/CD pipeline is that we need to build we need to build those pipelines, right? And uh, building pipelines. Uh, we should start with the, uh, a minimum viable pipeline for continuous integration, right? Uh, your journey uh, toward continuous delivery begins with a minimum viable pipeline. Uh, teams can start with a, a very simple process, such as implementing a pipeline that performs a code style check or a single unit test without you know, any deployment. 
Uh, here I have a picture of um, AWS Code Pipeline. This is one of the AWS services that, uh, that we can use uh, when we build a CI CD pipeline. And in here, we can see that uh, there is a couple of uh, um, uh, code build um, services as well that is executing or is actually um, doing the build of your application. Uh, and then the first stage is building the application. And on the uh, second stage is, uh, is doing unit tests, style checker, and, and code metrics, all done by, by code build. Uh, but here we're showing that it can be just one single process or can actually be processes in parallel. So if I have a three or four or five uh, process that I can run in parallel, I can actually do so to speed up the, uh, the pipeline. So this is a nice feature of a code build and code pipeline. Um, after the uh, continuous integration pipeline has been implemented and supporting processes have been established, now we can start transitioning toward the continuous delivery pipeline. This transition requires teams to automate both uh, building and deploying applications. A continuous delivery pipeline is characterized by the presence of staging and production steps where the production steps is performed after a manual approval. In the same manner as a continuous integration pipeline was built, we can gradually start building a continuous delivery pipeline by writing their uh, deployment scripts. Depending on the uh, needs of the application, some of the uh, deployment steps can be abstracted by existing AWS services. For example, code pipeline directly integrates with code deploy a service that automates code deployments to Amazon EC2 instances and even instances running on premises. So here we have, uh, here, uh, here we see the, um, the, the four uh, main stages. Uh, and, and this is again, it's, uh, it's a screenshot of uh, uh, AWS code pipeline showing uh, these stages. Uh, the blue um, uh, strip is basically executing that uh, steps are while the green ones already passed, right? So very flexible. Uh, manual approvals. Uh, this is something that we need to do uh, for, um, for um, continuous delivery, right? Uh, add an approval action to a stage in a pipeline at the point where you want the pipeline execution to stop so that someone with the required permissions can approve or reject the action. If the action is approved, the pipeline execution resumes. If the action is rejected, or if no one approves or rejects the action within seven days of the pipeline reaching the action and stopping, the result is the same as an action failing and the pipeline execution does not continue. So this is the, uh, this is the concept. Uh, so how do we deploy infrastructure code changes in a CI CD pipeline? Uh, infrastructure is handled by the um, uh, AWS CloudFormation, right? And um, AWS Code Pipeline lets you select AWS CloudFormation as a deployment action in any stage of your pipeline. You can then choose the specific action you would like AWS CloudFormation to perform, such as creating or deleting stacks and creating or executing change sets. A stack is a, um, a AWS CloudFormation concept and represents a group of related AWS resources. While there are many ways of provisioning infrastructure as code, we know that AWS CloudFormation is a comprehensive tool that can describe the most comprehensive set of AWS resources as code. So uh, this is to show that um, AWS CloudFormation actually integrates uh, very well with AWS uh, uh, code pipeline. Uh, part of the um, uh, continuous uh, um, delivery is uh, the deployment methods, right? There are several methods to deploy, uh, whether it's in production or uh, in uh, a development environment. And uh, you can consider multiple uh, deployment strategies and variations for rolling out and new versions of software in a continuous delivery process. These sections uh, basically shows uh, some of these methods, um, like um, 
uh, you know, uh, deploy all at once uh, or rolling deployment or uh, immutable and, and blue green. These are some of the deployments, um, uh, deployment methods. We indicate uh, which, uh, which of these methods are supported by AWS code deploy in uh, an AWS um, Elastic Beanstalk. These are, this is the current list of supported uh, deployment. Uh, the following table actually summarizes the characteristic of each of uh, these uh, deployment methods. I will mention here um, um, uh, one of the uh, uh, well-used uh, deployment, which is the blue-green uh, and the immutable deployment pattern. It specifies a deployment uh, of application code by starting uh, an entirely new set of server, servers with a new configuration or version of application code. This pattern leverages the uh, cloud capability that new server resources are created with simple API calls. The blue-green the blue deployment strategy is a type of immutable deployment, which also requires creations of another environment. Once the new environment is up and pass all tests, traffic is shifted to this new deployment. Crucially, uh, the old uh, environment, that is the uh, blue environment, is kept um, idle in case uh, a, a rollback is needed. So uh, there are also like uh, A-B deployment methods uh, and, and others, uh, other methods that are very popular, but uh, blue-green is actually one of them. All right, so um, let's explore AWS services that work with uh, CICD pipelines. Uh, we definitely talked uh, already about a few of them. Uh, but this is not a comprehensive leave. This is pretty much the most uh, uh, used ones. Uh, but there are definitely uh, two or three more services that uh, you can use with CICD pipelines. Uh, we already know about uh, AWS CloudFormation. This is to uh, speed up cloud provisioning with infrastructure as code. Uh, code commit is um, it's actually securely hosts highly scalable private Git repositories, uh, so you can collaborate on code, uh, and it's, co it's um, compatible with uh, you know with the Git uh, pattern. So uh, you uh, with Cocomi you can use uh, regular uh, Git clients and uh, still access code commit. Uh, code build uh, is uh, to build and test code uh, with uh, continuous scaling. So you don't have to worry about uh, if it's going to take longer or um, you know uh, resources because uh, it's, it's completely uh, automated. And you pay only for the build time that you use. Uh, so that's uh, very important. Code pipeline uh, automates the uh, continuous delivery pipelines for fast and reliable updates, uh, which is what we, we saw on the uh, couple of slides back. Code deploy. Automate uh, code deployments to maintain applications uptime. This is the one that takes care of uh, make the deployments, uh, you know, blue green or continuous or all at once um, and things like that. Uh, CodeStar is a um, is it's is to quick uh, develop, build, and deploy applications on AWS. Uh, CodeStar behind the scenes is actually using these services here, uh, code build, code pipeline, code deploy. So it's like a shell on top of these services to make it easier uh, for the uh, developer to uh, to create a pipeline. That's basically the idea here. Uh, AWS Cloud9 is a uh, uh, cloud IDE for writing, running, and debugging code. So if you don't want to, if you're a mobile person and you want to have your um, um, IDE on the cloud, then Cloud9 is a uh, is solution for that. Code Artifact is a, is a new service, uh, and this is basically to secure scalable and cost-effective artifacts management for uh, software uh, development. So these are the most important ones. Uh, but like I mentioned, there are other um, tools as well uh, that can be used with CICD pipeline. But it's a, it's a whole ecosystem of, uh, of tools uh, to uh, to actually work in the cloud. Um, manage services. Uh, all these um, services that we're we've been talking about, they are all managed, right? And uh, the the advantage for that is that uh, obviously free up your time. 
uh, for your staff. You don't have to worry about uh, backups or software updates, uh, you know, upgrades uh, when, when it comes to the system itself. All that is uh, taken care of by AWS. You can focus on your business rather than, you know, those IT issues. Um, and uh, you can create business value while you're saving on cost because, uh, you know, you don't pretty much you don't uh, need human capital for um, to take care of, you know, have the system up and running. The other good thing is that you you only pay for what you use. Like I mentioned in code, um, in code build, regardless of the size that you need, uh, it will scale automatically and then it will uh, it will shut down once the, uh, the build is done. So uh, this is how continuous integration actually looks. Um, if you can see there, up, uh, the application and the infrastructure, they're actually sitting um, in code commit. Uh, as a, you know, once you start developing, uh, you uh, send those um, um, uh, bits to uh, source control uh, where you commit those changes. And that is uh, hold by code commit. And um, and then co co commit pass uh, once uh, that um, uh, source uh, source code is in uh, co commit code build or code pipeline will detect those and it will start building using uh, code build uh, and that is part of the automation process. So uh, co commit and code build is what we call it the continuous integration. Um, as I mentioned, uh, co commit is a source control service compatible with Git which is a distributed version control system for tracking changes and, and, and source code during software development. Um, CoCommit uses um, uh, AWS identity and access management uh, control uh, and monitor, which is a centralized um, authentication and um, authorization system for AWS. So uh, there's just one place where you need to um, give a uh, grant access to your users uh, for permissions. Uh, regarding code build, uh, like I mentioned, run, uh, runs uh, your builds and uh, pre uh, in a pre-configured build environment. Uh, you can also bring your own environment if you need, uh, you can, you know, you can do custom environments as well uh, with code build. So you have a, like a, if you have Microsoft.NET framework application, you can actually uh, customize that and, uh, and make it available in code build. Um, so continuous delivery is uh, when we have uh, in a staging in production uh, as well. So here is the uh, the full uh, pipeline with the um, uh, with the manual deploy. So uh, we mentioned that continuous delivery uh, the deployment is um, is a manual process, right? Um, and here we have uh, uh, you know. The, the transition between the different services is actually handled by code pipeline here. And um, this is what defines, uh, you know, your release process workflow, basically. A pipeline comprises of uh, a series of stages. And um, an AWS code pipeline can pull source code for your pipeline directly from code commit or from GitHub as well, uh, or from uh, S3. Um, and you can run builds and, and unit tests in AWS Code Build. So Code Pipeline can deploy your changes using AWS Code Deploy. Um, or I can actually go, uh, and usually when uh, when it's deployed, you can deploy to EC2 or to uh, Amazon ECS as well. All right. Uh, continuous deployment is exactly the same pipeline, but uh, the process here is uh, is automated. So we don't have a manual process here. Uh, and like I mentioned, uses uh, uses code deploy, um, and um, you know, code deploy allows you to integrate software uh, deployment and scaling activities in order to keep your applications up up to date in a dynamic production environment. Uh, deployment you can use uh, uh, code deploy for deployments across your development environment or your test environment or your production environment. Uh, either way, uh, you can use the same tool for uh, all of them. And like I mentioned, this is the tool that we uh, will uh, do like uh, um, rolling deployments or blue-green updates and things like that. So here's the uh, complete uh, CICD pipeline. Uh, obviously, this is a basic one. 
uh, but conceptually, this is uh, this is the entire pipeline. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, deployment uh, microservice architecture. Um, uh, don't forget uh, about the Q and A uh, tab in the application. Uh, please submit your uh, questions, and uh, we'll try to answer at the end of the session. Right? Uh, what are microservices? This is something that is uh, uh, is uh, is a buzzword lately in the last uh, couple of years or uh, or more, uh, and is uh, is also known as the uh, microservice architecture. is a uh, is an architectural style that structures uh, in an application as a collection of services that usually contain these characteristics here. Highly maintainable and testable, loosely coupled, independently deployable, organized uh, around business capabilities and owned by uh, usually owned by a small team. This is a modern pattern as opposed to like a monolithic architecture where most of the functionality of an application was packed in one or two servers. The development of um, container technology made possible to package microservices maintaining separations of concerns. So small teams can actually handle it. Um, so how would deploy microservices? Um, for uh, containers, like, um, you know, if you're using Kubernetes, you can still use exactly the same services. And we'll see shortly uh, an example of that. Uh, for serverless, uh, you can still use AWS services to build uh, CI/CD pipelines for serverless applications. These are applications based on uh, AWS Lambda, which are composed of Lambda functions triggered by events. If you're a serverless application developer, you can use uh, the combination of uh, AWS Code Pipeline, AWS Code Build, CloudFormation to automate the building, testing, and deployment of serverless applications that are expressed in templates build with the AWS service, a serverless application model, SAM, right? So um, this is um, usually what um, we do with our customers uh, uh, when we need to deploy um, um, in a serverless environment. Uh, in this case, um, this is a uh, like a React application or could be um, also a um, uh, another type of application um so uh we we put this in uh in code commit and then uh we do the build and then once it's built uh we put the content in the uh, in the nestry bucket at the same time we invalidate the content request i mean if we're using cloud from this is a uh, cdn application uh, or cdn service so um once we once we uh, deploy a new build, we invalidate the content so that next time, uh, CDN will bring the uh, will get a re uh, fresh content from the uh, from the S3 bucket. This is usually what happens on a front end uh, application. On the back end, uh, same thing. We do code uh, code commit, and then uh, we do uh, uh, we do the building. Uh, we put it the, uh, in ECR on the container registry, the uh, image for the Docker container. And then we deploy the, uh, to ECS, right? And, uh, and from there to Fargate. Uh, and this is usually a pattern that we use for uh, backend um, uh, deployments, right? So same thing. This is all uh, uh, serverless. There's actually nothing here. Um, uh, well, it's, uh, yeah, we're, we're deploying to uh containers right but it's, it's pretty much uh no virtual machines here all right so this is how we do serverless in the uh in the real world serverless deployment for CI/CD pipeline all right so let's talk a little bit about uh gitops gitops is a new concept it's usually a way to deploy um um uh, microservices architecture uh but uh it, for the continuous delivery, there's actually uh, a slightly different. Um, they, uh, instead of uh, pushing to uh, containers, we're actually pulling uh, with the uh, controller application so that um, uh, we keep the, um, like in this case, Kubernetes completely, um, you know, with, uh, with any access. And by having a, con a controller inside Kubernetes, then we can, we can pull from from Git, for instance, and uh, and deploy that way. In general, 
uh, GitOps uh, is a new pattern. Well, not new, but uh, it's, it's a pattern that's been around for the last couple of years, which help us uh, increase productivity, enhance developer experience, improve stability, higher reliability, consistency in the standardization, and stronger security guarantees. How do we do that? Um, usually, we do that. Uh, this is like a uh, GitOps pattern. Uh, we have uh, our uh, uh, Git is our uh, single source of truth for a system. So we don't do anything outside of Git. Anything has to be in, in code, and it has to be registered in Git, right? Developers will push their applications, and uh, DevOps will push their uh, configuration file for the infrastructure. And then, as you can see here, uh, we still use the same uh, continuous deliver, uh, uh, continuous integration process through um, 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 code commit and code build. Uh, this is actually um, what we're using Git. This is uh, code pipeline. So, um, and then we send this to the container registry where this controller is actually uh, detecting changes here and syncing with the, uh, uh, with Git at the same time with the repository. So this, which is sitting inside Kubernetes, is doing all the syncing and deployment so that uh, you know we deploy the application uh, to Kubernetes using that way. As you can see, this part is inside Kubernetes, and um, we use Git or code commit to um, uh, you know to to actually hold everything. If we need to, uh, this is the single place where we operate. Here is where we create infrastructure, we make changes, or we destroy uh, environments, and uh, all the changes are actually observable or verifiable, right? So everything is sitting here. This is this is why this new pattern is actually very powerful. All right, um, let's go uh, to um, monitoring how to monitor applications and infrastructure performance. This is um, this is the last um, section that we have here. And we just want to mention here that monitoring, alerting, and dashboard, to be able to realize the value from your deployments, you need to be able to measure, right? Proper monitoring and alerting allows you to visualize all your systems, track system metrics in real time, historically uh, as well, set threshold and receive notifications with a variety of levels and critically, um, and a variety of formats as well. Uh, so, um, and get insight into what is happening. So in the past, this is what we're using in order to do root cause analysis about what happened in troubleshooting, uh, real time, how is my system responding at this moment? And in the uh, future, when will I need to grow based on past performance, right? Yeah, do I need to increase something? Uh, do I need to change part of my code to uh, uh, make it better? Things like that. And lastly, be proactive and prevent uh, problems. Uh, so to monitor applications, uh, we we actually have a, a tool for that, which is uh, AWS CloudWatch for uh, for logs. We use that for logs and for metrics. And then there's a, a, a different services, a different service for traces. Now another concept that you will hear uh, pretty often lately is uh, observability. And what is observability? Um, is the uh, is a superset of monitoring, and it provides not only high-level overviews of the system's health, but also highly granular insights into the implicit failure modes uh, of the system. In addition, um, an observable system furnishes ample context about its inner workings, unlocking the ability to uncover deeper system issues. Monitoring, monitoring on the other hand, is best suited for uh, to report the overall health systems and to issue alerts, right? Um, observability actually has uh, uh, three, uh, the three pillars of observability, which is logs, metrics, and, and traces. Um, so an event log is an immutable uh, timestamp record of uh, discrete events that happen over time. Metrics are a numeric representation of data measure over intervals of times. Metrics can help modeling uh, you know, and prediction to obtain knowledge of the behavior of a system over intervals of time. 
uh, in the present and in the future. And then trace is actually a representation of a series of uh, causally uh, related dis distributed events. And um, actually traces are a representation of logs. The data structure of traces look uh, almost like that, uh, like the, you know, kind of the same thing as the event log. And like I mentioned in, in AWS, we use uh, CloudWatch for logs and metrics and AWS X-Ray for uh, traces. Right. Um, again, uh, with uh, CloudWatch, um, we uh, we can actually uh, um, have the uh, entire observability in a single platform, and um, uh, you know, and then uh, across all the applications and infrastructure. It's easy to, uh, way to collect metrics in AWS and uh, and also uh, work on premises and then uh, improve uh, operational performance and resource optimizations, get uh, operational visibility and insights, and uh, there are actionable, um, actionable insights from logs. Uh, CloudWatch has many features. We're not going to be able to go over all of this because um, we're already uh, at the end of the session. Uh, but you can actually check in, uh, in AWS documentation uh, and it's not only like a local metrics, but a bunch of other um, subservices, I would say, that, um, that you can use to uh, improve observability in, um, in your uh, environment. And then X-Ray uh, actually uh, helps developers analyze and debug production distributed applications such as those uh, built using uh, microservices architecture. With X-Ray, you can understand how your application uh, and its underlying services and performing uh, actually works uh, to troubleshoot the root cause of uh, performance issues and errors. X-Ray provides an end-to-end -end view of uh, requests as they travel through your application and shows a map of your application's underlying components. You can use X-Ray to analyze both applications in development and in production. From simple uh, three-tier applications to complex microservices applications consisting of uh, thousands of services. Okay, and with that, uh, we can actually go to uh, Q and A. Uh, and before we end uh, this session, let's see if we have any questions here. Let's see. Okay, I have a question here. Uh, do we have to use AWS services to implement a CI/CD workflow? And the answer is no. Uh, there are other solutions uh, that actually are very popular, uh, third-party solutions such as um, Jenkins, for instance, or Team City um, uh, tools like that, that um, you can actually implement the same type of um, CI/CD pipeline like uh, we are currently doing with AWS services. So that's, uh, it's, it's, it's possible to do it with other tools as well. Here's another one that says, uh, can we use a tool such as Terraform to work with uh, uh, infrastructure as code? And the answer is yes. Uh, Terraform is, very, is a very popular tool uh, for uh, AIC. Uh, and actually, uh, many people uh, use this, and uh, it is especially important when you have to work with uh, multiple cloud environments, right? Uh, one to uh, cloud providers. Um, so, um, AWS CloudFormation works in AWS, but Terraform can actually work on other environments as well. And then, uh, what if CloudFormation CDK doesn't work with my current uh, de um, development language? Yeah, AWS offers uh, five or six um, languages right now, uh, not all of them, but um, you can actually request the, um, the roadmap for CDK is, uh, is actually open to the public. So you can see what is coming or you can request uh, uh, you know, for uh, another language. Uh, AWS is very responsive with their customers. So if they see that um, a specific request is very popular, they will implement it. So uh, that's, uh, that's not a problem. 
And uh, that's all the uh, time we have. So um, thank you for um, being around. And um, this uh, concludes our presentation. Thank you.